So here we are, September 22nd, 2016. This is my fall equinox. So at the Google search, I did Austin fall equinox. I'm going to go to uh, timeanddate.com again. I'm going to scroll down here. And you'll see the September equinox is September 22nd, 921 a.m. here in Austin. So I want to show you what timeanddate.com has to say as far as what I'm uh, supposed to expect to see for a sunrise angle and sunrise sunset here in Austin. I'll scroll down here. Here we are at the 22nd. <clears throat> and the sun was supposed to rise at 89 degrees at 7.20 a.m. And it's supposed to set at 270 degrees, 7.27 p.m. You can see the 23rd looks like a little better equinox with it rising 90 degrees, setting 270, but uh, it said that the 22nd is the equinox for me. The footage I shot this morning of the sunrise on the equinox was shot right from this location. Now this is Google Maps Street View. Uh, I have it set up so that we're pointing right at the direction. Um, you'll see in just a second that the sun rose right right here okay so notice these three electrical towers we got the big one here and then they're going off in the distance like this you'll see that in just a second now i just want to show you google earth i've got some uh, pins located on here the filming location this is uh from the street view this is where i was sitting when i was filming the uh, sunrise this morning and then um from the Google Street View, these were the two smaller electrical poles, and then this is the larger electrical pole that's off in the, the distance. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull out the ruler, and I'm going to extend a line from the filming location just off to the right side of that smaller electrical pole. Now I'm out at the distance of that large electrical pole. You'll see that the footage that I shot is just like this. This gives a heading of 93.32 degrees and a distance of 1.26 miles out to those large electrical poles. So the way I recorded this this morning was as I set a compass on top of my Nikon P900. I used my phone to record uh, the angle that the sun was coming up but at the same time I had the P900 uh, recording the sunrise as well. Now I did come up with a little bit of a discrepancy as far as the angle that the sun came up. But you're going to see in just a little bit that it's what the P900 that captured that's going to give us definitive proof that we're in a simulation. So here we are back at Google researching distance to the horizon. And you can see that the official answer is for an observer on the ground with eye level at height 5 foot 7. The horizon is at a distance of 2.9 miles. For an observer standing on a hill or tower 100 feet in height, the horizon is at a distance of 12.2 miles. We're going to go all the way down here to this calculator. You know, it says this is a rough guide. And that's all we need right now. My camera was on a tripod. It was on the back of my truck. So I'm going to say that we were 9 feet high above the ground. All right. So the calculated distance to the horizon is 3.7 miles. It's not a big deal. I'm going to show you something else. Another thing that we need to consider is visibility. So we're back here at Google doing a little research. We've got visibility distance in here. 
His first answer is about the horizon. The second one, visibility, Wikipedia. We want to check this out. Now you can read this all yourself, but uh, it's a meteorological term. Um, there's definitions for it. There's calculations for how it's uh, decided. Uh, you can see that they have you know, specific definitions. For visibility, less than a certain amount, it's considered fog. Or less than this, it's mist. Or less than that, it's haze. Um, so visibility is, is something that we can actually check out on our different weather sites. Let's check it out. So here we are at Weather Underground. And uh, they do uh, show what the visibility is. And it's 10 miles. All right, we've got clouds, a few scattered at 4,800 feet, scattered clouds at 7,000 feet. Look at visibility here. The greatest distance toward the horizon at which prominent objects can be identified with the naked eye. All right, so we are limited in our visibility. This is very important to consider. So as you're watching this, I want you to consider the things that we just touched on. Visibility is 10 miles. Uh, distance to the horizon at 9 feet, 3.7 miles. Those electrical towers, 1.26 miles. How far are those clouds from me while I'm filming? I mean, they're not more than 10 miles, right? Well, watch this. Let's watch as the sun penetrates this layer of clouds right above it. You might be thinking to yourself, oh no, it's not going to go through that next layer too, is it? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's going to come out of the first layer. It's going to go through the second layer too.
So this isn't the first time I've, I've filmed the sunrise up through the clouds like that. Um, I have this video, Flat Earth Sunrise Compilation in St. Martin with clouds and birds behind the sun, where I captured as well. I published this May 4th of this year. And uh, you just take a peek here. It's the same type of thing where the sun came right up through the clouds. It's incredible. I've got a number of these sunrises like this. The only thing is I didn't understand it uh, back then like I do now. Um, so we'll, we'll draw those connections. So to make the connections, I want to bring you back to Google Earth here. Um, you know, this is the map that we we're using before as far as the way I was shooting this video. You can see that north was, was set to the west here. We're going to sprint, uh, spin that back up to the north. Now we're going to zoom out a bunch. And now we're going to pull out our ruler. I'm just going to show you that from that filming location, we're at like around there for, so here's 13 miles. Visibility is 10. So I can't see that far. It's impossible. How far? were those clouds. They were definitely less than 13 miles. My camera can't see that far. Okay, so where did the sun come from? Somewhere in here the sun rose. It came up like a hot air balloon through the clouds. It didn't come up over the horizon. I mean, take a look at this. Where did the sun come from? I can't see out here. You think it rose in Houston? I can't see that far. No, it came up probably about 10 miles away from me. Somewhere out in this range. It came through the clouds. It's going to take 12 hours to go over my head. And 10 miles over here, it's going to disappear again. Think about that. It's a simulation. From wherever you are out here, it's going to come up 10 miles to one side of you. It's going to take its 12-hour trip or whatever, and then it's going to go down 10 miles on the other side. And this depends on visibility, but that's how it's working. You know, I continue to pray fervently to the creator of this world to reveal the truth um, and when I started making this video series the definitive proofs I knew that I had evidence that we're not on a ball and that flat earth maps don't work but I was gonna have to connect lots and lots of dots for the definitive proof that we're in a simulation but now today when I went out to film the equinox clouds were absolutely perfect to show me that the sun was coming up locally very close to me specific to my location and I had photographic proof this is something that everybody can do you can do it you just need a, a long-range you know telephoto lens telescope Get whatever equipment you want and start filming sunrises and sunsets and analyzing them. And if you continue to pray and ask the Creator for the truth, you'll get a situation where the clouds are lined up right or so something shows up when you're recording that it'll show you that it's local and it's close. So I'm going to continue to put out videos in this series. Uh, I've got all the rest of the footage, you know, I condensed it so that this video wouldn't be too long. I'll put all the footage together at regular speed in a video and, and put it up uh, so everybody can take a look at it and analyze it. And I recommend that you go out and do your own. Till next time.
YouTube. Faithful subscribers, whether you're boosting my ego with positive comments or you're keeping me on my toes with some intelligent trolling, you're all appreciated. Despite the fact that I've already proved flat out that curvature of the earth can't be measured, and that that is not due to any kind of atmospheric refraction, light bending, And despite the fact that I've devised a definitive curvature test using multiple reference points to prove that the Earth is flat, I often hear that it can't be proven either way whether the Earth is round or flat. So I'm going to take the flatness test a few steps further and go into a bit more detail to prove once and for all that we're living on a plate. I'm going to stick to using photos of the Kaikoura Ranges in the South Island of New Zealand, taken from Wellington's south coast. This gives us a pretty decent range in terms of point-to-point -point length, as well as a decent range in heights of peaks that we can use. I've been out there a few times taking panoramas as the spot's just breathtaking, especially at sunset. On the day I was out taking these shots, the conditions were just about perfect. The further away the mountains are from the camera, the lighter they are. That's because there's more atmosphere between us and the further mountains, so they get kind of washed out. Pretty obvious, but this photo demonstrates it nicely. I'm going to pick out a few prominent peaks and color code them for convenience. And now go to Google Earth and find them. And a few weeks later, I've found them. It's pretty hard work, but I'm confident that I have found the right ones. But please don't take my word for it. Check for yourself. Everything you need is right here. Once again, I'm going to enter the heights of the peaks and the distance from the camera into a graph. Now I go back to the photo and make a horizontal line at the height of each peak, colour coded of course. Since the furthest mountain away is also the tallest, I can just cut it at that point and where that line meets each other point gives us an extrapolation to a 2D view to count for perspective. So hopefully it will match up to the lines on the photo again. Let's have a look. And once again, pretty much perfect. I'm guessing refraction's not playing much of a part here. I don't think we get a whole lot over the Cook Strait, judging by my experimentation. And what anomalies you can see there, I'm willing to bet would be a result of Google Earth's measurements. We can't expect Google to have accurate data for every nook and cranny in the Kiwi bush. That's in pretty full on wilderness out there. Now I'm going to do the curvature calculations for each of those peaks and input that into a graph to do a comparison. Let's see how it looks. As I suspected, it's all over the show. Not only does it not match, but some of the lines have crossed over. Any of you ball lovers out there care to explain that to me? I didn't think so. 
if we get these scales matched up we can get a rough idea of how it would look if there were any curvature. I'll leave you with that. I'd have to say curvature thoroughly busted once again. Thanks for watching.